I'm curious, you now you mentioned that one of the possibilities is us truly finding enlightenment. And I'm curious to know what are some of the venues you think an enlightened species can take? You think that one, meaning us, once we get this enlightenment phase as a collective, do you think we go into, you know, curious voyage into the universe? You know, today we're recording on May 4th, so Star Wars, may the 4th be with <laughs> you. But are we doing that? Do you think we're going inward? What's your uh, preferable scenario too? Like, what are some of the areas that you think we can cover? Well, I mean, the fir the only project that we have from history about uh, en enlightened individuals is the project they undertake is to bring as many people into enlightenment as possible. Hmm. And and that is not just a project of teaching people practices. It's a, it's a project of lifting them out of poverty. It's a project of giving them relative political security. And everybody's now saying, oh, this is impossible. Well, if it's impossible, we're doomed, right? And And, and, and my response to that is, We're living in a time in which it's a reasonable thing to say that there are going to be godlike entities. I don't think they're gods, but they're going to be godlike entities. And you and now you're finding it impossible that we could, right, rise to this challenge. Like I hope you're wrong. I I, I hope we 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 can in 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 the, in this strangest of times do something right outside of the box. Um, So uh, let's say this does get going. I think for the longest time, the project is just going to be, let's get everybody enlightened. And like I said, hopefully that will provide templates uh, that can be internalized by these machines. And like I say, we'll find, well, one of three things, actually. They can't, there's something missing. Um, and, and, and I'm wrong. And, I'm happy if I'm wrong about this. I'm really happy if I'm wrong about this. Yeah. There, there is some secret sauce about us and only we, because of that secret sauce can be enlightened. And then again, that's our project. And, um, or they can, and they help us bodhisattva like, or, and I think this one is the least possible. They just decide to go into Nirvana, right? Um, like, like kind of like in the movie, her, right. Uh, and, I don't see that happening. Maybe that, that happens at some point. Uh, I, I'm not an enlightened being. I, I'm only taking my bearings from the, the beings that I considered reasonably to have achieved enlightenment, the, the sages, um, and the sages and the saints. So, um, I think, I think our project is, is really, I like, and again, I want to really clearly understand what I'm saying, you know, enlightenment for everyone doesn't just mean telling people to meditate. It means making the conditions so that people can pursue this as their primary pursuit. And again, you'll say, well, it's not that, well, we're going to enter into a period of the greatest economic disruption. This is going to be greater than the printing press. This is going to be greater than electricity in its impact on economics. And So this is an opportunity where we can reshuffle the economic debt. Now, people are rightly saying, but there's greed. Yes, there is. And those people, they can either resist us, and then we all sink, including them and including their children, or they give up enough that we can make this happen. That's what it is. That's a choice. And I can't make people make this choice. I can try and give the most, hopefully the most rational and And, and, and passionate presentation of this proposal because things are in the ninth inning. I think Eric Einstein is right about this. We're in the ninth inning. We've got to get it together. We've got to give up the project of the narcissism of small differences. We've got to give up tearing each other apart for political and identity politics. Um, and it's, and, and, and like, like, You know what's going to be a, a threat to whatever identity you are advocating for for yourself? And I'm not trying to like dis besmirch that. AGI is going to be a bigger threat to your sense of identity than anything else ever. Mm -hmm. We have to we have to make this a priority. The way we made, I, I want to give one clear example where we did this and something analogous. 
godlike power. Atomic. Mom. Godlike power. So some scientists saw that it was a threshold they had crossed when they got an at- atomic reaction. And some of them were able to lift off the focus of, I just want to make the thing and prove my project, mm-hmm. right? Einstein and others, to see, wait, this has really powerful implication. This is going to change the world and make it possible for us to destroy ourselves. We have to set up a project to beat the Nazis at getting this. So at least it's in the hands of democratic countries rather than genocidal, totalitarian, insane regimes like the Nazis. And they did it. It was done. It succeeded. We can do it. That that analogy between the nuclear bomb and AI is one that I never thought about and one that really... I think it's going to be a really important one to to compare and contrast and also embrace because like you say this really has the potential of changing drastically how we think of ourselves how we think of our time on earth yeah. and especially when a lot of people one of the biggest uh anchors of our identity is our work and our careers and our job titles yes. and our, you know, yes. all of those things are going to get displaced tremendously. Like, for example, we've just saw IBM laying off 8,000 people because AI will automate their work. So yes. new jobs are going to get created. You know, we, this argument that technologies always create better or different jobs, that's also part of it. But it also reveals like what you argue, Professor, that it's a gem of opportunity to really discover who we are and who we want to be and display these traits of honor, of virtuosity, of courageousness, of compassion towards others, of realizing that we really, we're, we have to be beyond our identity politics or differences and realize that we're in this blue marble in a vast ocean of the universe, coexisting together, trying to figure out if we can create a godlike <laughs> technology. And, mm. you know, we need to set aside all of those pretty, I don't want to say petty ideas, which are because are not people really. No, they're not. But 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 they're maybe this is a better word. And I I hope it's not misconstrued, but they're 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 becoming almost obsolete. Yeah, because they're being overtaken by I mean, the allies again, World War Two analogy, the allies allied with the Soviet Union. Like they saw that they had to overcome significant, profound differences because they had a common enemy. I'm not saying this is a common enemy, the AGI, but it's a common threat. Mm-hmm. We've got to, we've got to, yeah, I, we, we, we've got to figure out how to make this a cross cultural project. And like I said, the only thing that has done that in the past is religion. So we need something like, I must, and I, as I've also argued, it's improbable that we can just return to the existing religions. We have to, this is the, uh, the religion that's not a religion idea. Again, we need something like this if we're going to, right? And it has to be one that is willing to like help bring religious frameworks in, but ask them to not demand that their religious agenda gets the priority in what's happening here. Ask them at least, can we wait until we get some handle on this before we keep doing, pushing that? We've got to make this work. Yeah.